I wanna start the day by sharing a quote from Edmund Burke, who was from the 18th century, and he was a philosopher at that time. Now, it's probably really a paraphrase, you know, they spoke in that old King's English, but the gist of it is, when good men are silent, evil can spread. I got on this because I recently read about a study that was commissioned and I think funded by the Boone and Crockett Association. A lot of people don't realize that Boone and Crockett is not primarily a records keeping club. That's all most of us know it as. It's really a conservation organization started by Theodore Roosevelt and some other great guys. And that conservation work has brought up a really important topic to all of us that care and actually are passionate about wildlife and hunting. Which leads me to another quote from the first person that was ever labeled wildlife biologist in North America, Aldo Leopold. Now I went to the University of Georgia and back in the day, I don't think it's still that way now, you pretty much had to eat, sleep and breathe Aldo Leopold. It was just required reading, required digestion and a required thought process. If you haven't read it, I strongly encourage y'all to read Aldo's A Sand County Almanac. It's excellent reading, easy to read, not scientific, but great observations from a guy that owned a relatively small farm and watched it through the seasons. A famous quote from Aldo Leopold is the integrity of the hunt is not measured by what's brought home, but how the sportsman conducts their sales in the field. The project I mentioned by Boone and Crockett was called the Poach and Pay Project, and it's apparently the most comprehensive project or research ever done on the impact of poaching in the United States. And we're going to put a link in the description so you can learn all the details. That would take way too long to share here. But one of the main points that just hurts me is that for every poacher caught, 24 more never get caught and just walk free. Think about that for every poacher. Maybe you read some, you know, emails or something about a guy getting caught slaughtering elk or, you know, doing bad stuff. For everyone caught, 24 more go free. And you think about how many gunshots you hear that are not accounted for. You, you find this is horrible, you know, where a deer was gutted on the side of a road and just left there for all the public to see or all the stuff you see that no one was penalized for. And I'm not just like, oh, we got to grind them in the dirt. I'm talking about saving hunting and hunting heritage in America, and it's wrong. Now, Boone and Crockett's research ended up showing a huge cost in many ways associated with this just widespread poaching. The financial details shared in the report are staggering. The summary was it cost about a billion dollars a year. Think about that, a billion dollars a year. That's missed opportunity, missed fines, missed license sales because those critters simply aren't there, discourages people from hunting, you know the story. And I hope you get that report, again, a link in the description and go through those details because to me, who lives this world every day, it was still staggering and saddening, saddening and maddening. How could we let that happen? And I think it goes back to that quote, when good men are silent, evil's allowed to spread. How many times have you heard a shot or saw a pickup where it shouldn't be or something and you did nothing about it? I've done that too. Now I've, I've chased down some poachers before and it's not comfortable and unfriendly and you gotta be cautious. There's, you know, could be guns out there, call the game one first. You gotta, gotta be smart about this, but we just can't let this go widespread and willy nilly. And I'm asking everyone out there that has a heart for conservation that is a heart for the hunt, not just big antlers, you have a heart for hunting and wildlife, to step up and join me going forward to be more accountable for helping law enforcement. There's not enough law enforcement agents to do this, folks. They rely on us to provide information. There's simply not enough game wardens, county sheriffs, whatever, to stop this plague on our wildlife. We have to step up to the plate and actually be more ethical and help protect our wild resources. Speaking of ethics, I'm gonna bring up a very unpopular subject, and that's CWD, chronic wasting disease. I noticed some loud voices in the industry saying that's just a government farce or brought on by insurance companies. None of this is true, folks. I went to my first CWD scientific meeting more than three decades ago. 
CWD has been known for six decades. It's studied and researched, and we don't know everything, but we know a lot. And here's the bottom line. When bait piles are out, that concentrates deer. That's why hunters put bait piles out. Why do you have bait piles out in still of a food plot or an oak tree or whatever? Because it concentrates deer and they salivate, urinate, and defecate there. And it's spread by a prion. This is not questionable. Don't believe those voices that say it's questionable. There's tons of research on this through decades now on multiple continents. It's spread by prions and when deer salivate, urinate, and defecate in a real small circle, Bait piles hopefully are not as big as even a small food plot, certainly not as big as a big food plot. They're not spread out like acorn trees all over. That argument is old and tired. It's nonsense. So I know it's legal to bait in a lot of states. CWD is now in 36 states. And in some states, yes, it's impacted the deer herd such that those populations are declining. There's a public area in western Kansas I used to really enjoy hunting when I drew a tag. It's about 17,000 acres, mixed ag and, you know, hardwoods down in these bottoms and plenty of water. It's ideal habitat. And back in the day, a lot of huge trophies were harvested there. And the state did spotlight surveys. They're not accurate, but they're a good indicator. They still do surveys. Back in the day, it'd be about 120 deer per square mile. Then it dropped to 40, and the last survey I heard was nine. Nine deer per square mile off a place that used to be strongly desired as an area to go have a great hunt for whitetails. Do you want to hunt where there's nine deer per square mile? What's your odds? That's CWD, folks. Those western states have a much lower hunting population, not near as much media, and where CWD has been the most devastating except for a couple areas in Wisconsin, people just aren't talking about it. I know folks out there that are, you know, bought land just for hunting. They're selling that land, they're moving on. It's not there anymore. Bucks are not living, hardly any bucks are living past three and a half years old or older. This is real. And I think as ethical, conservation-minded sportsmen that the vast majority of y'all are, the silent majority, if you will, we know better. The research is clear. A couple quick things. If you look at the maps that USGS has made, these are based on real samples, not estimates, folks. This is not a government conspiracy. It started small in a small area, and you can just see over the last 25 years how it's expanded. That's not a disease that's been here forever. You don't see it just taking over for a disease that's been here forever or would have done that long time ago. This is just common sense and strong scientific principle. This is a relatively new disease to deer. It is expanding. It's 100% lethal. You hear about, you know, maybe the captive deer and species bred deer that are resistant to it. Some deer with a certain genetic makeup do live a year or two longer, and they just spread the disease, but they also die from the disease. They don't, you know, live to 15 years old and fall over in an old age in a assisted living home. It's 100% lethal, and the worst thing we can have is deer spreading the disease more. Ideally, every deer out there that currently is infected with CWD, we could take off the landscape like that. That would really slow it down. Well, that's why some states are working to slightly reduce the population and are making baiting and minerals and stuff illegal in those areas, so there's just less mouth-to-mouth, nose-to-nose. Now, deer are gonna groom, they're gonna use scrapes. I'm so passionate about this, I'm standing out in the rain talking about folks, to me, if you're an ethical sportsman, you're gonna get on this knowledge wagon. You're gonna learn more, you're gonna be more informed, and you're gonna share with your friends. And I got on this because I do a lot of grocery shopping in our family, and I was at the local Walmart this weekend. Both seasons started Monday, and this weekend I seen guys pushing through Walmart. They weren't shopping like I was, you know, eggs and stuff like that. They had deer corn in their buggy. There's many counties around me that are CWD counties. This is a CWD county. They didn't drive over here from somewhere that's not a CWD area just to buy deer corn at Walmart. There's all kinds of places to sell corn closer to them. My neighbors are baiting. People in this area are baiting. And right, you know, right there, right south of me, 15 miles or so is the Arkansas line. And in that county, if you harvest a buck, you got about a 30% chance it will test positive for CWD. 
and that population starting to decline. A really great whitetail herd can reproduce or can gain about 30% a year from fawns. So 100 deer could end up with 130 the next year without hunter mortality or something. If CWDs infecting about 30% a year or killing about 30% a year, there's no room for hunter mortality. Again, this is straight up science. This is not emotional. I'm not sponsored by any high fence group or feed company or anything else. This is a person that's been incorporated as a consulting wildlife biologist for 35 years. You'll never hear me say this, have degrees from major leading universities in wildlife, had disease classes, blah, blah, blah. I'm passionate about deer. And I'm asking, I'm pleading, most of y'all, I know some of y'all, I'm gonna get hate mail, I know that. Just send it, I don't care, just send it. It doesn't matter to me. It's actually good for us, it just gives us more, you know, more presence. So bots pick that up and spread our channel even more. So you send all that hate mail you want. I'm asking that, what I believe is that silent majority of people that really care about wildlife resources to be responsible, get educated on the facts, not the internet rumors. And hunt responsibly and ethically this year. I know this was a deep subject, but it's really on my heart. I hope you'll share this episode with your friends. I hope y'all will talk about it in hunting camps and on the way to go hunting in the morning. And more importantly, I hope you will seek the Creator's will. You find His will for your life, God's Word, the Bible, God the Creator are the same, and apply it daily. Thanks for watching Growing Deer.